Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Uke Stuff podcast. It has been a while since I've made a podcast, and I don't apologize for that. I've been busy not only with my own life and my family, but teaching elementary music, creating content for the Uke Playlongs channel and content for the Uke Stuff channel, and doing a little bit of work with flight ukulele on the sides, and I will talk about that a little bit later in the video as well. So I am recording from my school. It's after school, and I'm recording from my school today. You can see some of our caramel ukuleles hanging behind me if you're watching the video. If you're listening to the audio, I'm going to be showing some things today, but I'll try to describe what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And really what I'm going to be doing while I talk through some things today is I'm going to be bringing a new ukulele to life as I talk to you. Now, for Christmas, my parents asked me, what would you like for Christmas? And my answer was, I'd like a 3D printer. The Circuits and Strings channel, uh, a few months back, showed, Daniel showed how to, or how he was making a 3D travel ukulele. And he actually had a friend print it and I knew that I wanted to do it. And my original thought was to print them for all of my students so they could take one home and, and practice with it. I still might do that. I don't know. But my parents bought me a used 3D printer. I made a whole video about it. So if you want to see more about that, you can watch the whole video. I'm going to hold it up now. This is my original print. It was more like the fifth or sixth print because I started trying to print it right away without knowing what I was doing at all. And I wouldn't still say that I'm a master of 3D printing, but I'm getting better. And this one actually broke not too long ago. The, it has a truss rod and I'm kind of turning around and I printed the truss rod in a different color because I'm out of black filament. By the way, I found a really good deal from GST 3D over Christmas where they were selling 10 one kilogram rolls of filament for $10 each. That's like a bargain. Usually the filament's almost $20 a roll. So I bought 10 different colors, but they were out of black. So um, with this one, I could not print another truss rod in black. And there's actually, if I hold it to the camera, there's actually a crack in the neck as well. Now the cool part is being 3D printed, I can replace any piece and get right back in business. But anyhow, it turned out okay. And actually, since the truss rod broke and I'm using an updated truss rod design, it actually plays much better and the action is much better. I'm holding up the action so people can see it on the video for those of you that are listening. And then my son, who's eight and plays the ukulele, asked for one. And I need to work with his a little bit here because um, the action is, is pretty bad but I printed him one that was blue and white because those were the colors that he wanted me to use. So I printed him one. And I also made some changes to the design of the neck. You can open up the files and edit them with an editor. And I added some front position markers and I also added some side position markers, although I could go deeper and clearer with side position markers, but I think it's okay. You could also fill them in a little bit. I didn't want it massively um, on the side with holes, but I just wanted a little indentation so you know where three, five, seven, and ten were. And those are there, and those actually should be filled in with like a little bit of paint or something. So that was my second one. Well, what I'm going to be working on while I'm talking with you here today is a brand new one that I've printed over the last three days. I'm going to put these on the ground here. And this is a, um, I believe they call it translucent or something like that. For the material, it almost looks like fluorocarbon strings. Uh, I was hoping it would print clear, but it didn't print clear. It sort of printed um, like the color of a fluorocarbon string, which is fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to string this up the rest of the way. So these 3D printed travel ukuleles have five pieces. They have the body, they have the neck, they have a truss rod in the back, they have a nut, and they have a bridge saddle piece that you can actually put a piezo pickup in. Then, of course, you have to add tuners to it, strings, and then you also need a screw with a small nut to tighten the truss rod. So this one is going to become live as I'm talking with you today, and that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, in News with Flight, I've disclaimed this every time I've reviewed a Flight product, but over the last months, um, I think since June officially, I've been doing very part-time work with Flight, and that has been great. Flight has been wonderful to work with, and they. one of my big concerns was I didn't necessarily want to work with Flight without 
being able to still do reviews of ukuleles. And they said, no, you are still welcome to do that. We've worked that out and there's been no problems. Although I have had a couple manufacturers that are not willing to work with me because I am connected with flight as well, which is too bad. But if I want to review their ukuleles, I guess I can buy them and review them separately. I, I mean, so it, that's the only native. But um, one thing I wanted to show people, and I've talked about this once in an unboxing. I don't know if I'll be doing a full review of this or not because it's exactly the same as another ukulele. But one of the reasons why we started talking, Flight and I, was one of my early requests for them was to put a, a concert TUC, a, a concert travel ukulele together, which by the way is now out, not in the United States, but in Europe it's out. So they now have a concert sized travel ukulele, but that was one of my original requests. And that led to a discussion of, can would you be interested in a long neck soprano ukulele? And my answer, of course, was yes. I didn't even think about that. So they've released that. And in the meantime, we were talking about education. I was like, we really could use these flight travel ukuleles in education. And that led to uh, this product. There's actually a booklet that goes with it that I didn't bring with me here to school today, which I helped design and organize. And then putting the colored Aquila kid strings on an ukulele, selling it, it has the cover, has this special little booklet, it's not a huge booklet, it has the Aquila strings and a second set of strings for schools at a great price. I think the Hal Leonard price is $53 and your local dealer may sell it to you less than that. So for education, these are out now. So I'm very, very proud of this product. Um, it's really, it's still just a normal travel ukulele, but a couple of extra nods for education, plus a really great price for education on a long neck soprano sized concert ukulele. So the longer neck will be great for middle school and high school students. The soprano body is nice so that younger students will be able to hold it. And of course, it's made out of your durable travel ukulele with a strap button. I'm not really here to advertise that, but I'm just something I'm really proud of. And I don't think a lot of schools know that this is out yet, but it's a great thing. And I love the Aquila Kid Strings, not for myself. I'm a fluorocarbon player myself, but as a teacher, as you can see on all these ukuleles behind me, by the way, if you're uh, listening to this on the radio, I'm pulling off one of the ukuleles off the wall, but they all have the Aquila Kid Strings and it just simplifies the playing so very much in the learning, so very much in the early process. So I wanted to show that before I started working on this ukulele and I'll talk about some other things. So I'm about to pull out my pack of strings. These are Oasis strings, by the way. I don't generally use Oasis. Generally I use Martin strings, but I've bought some Oasis in the past and I'll use these for the video tonight. And for, of course the podcast, for those of you that are listening. So one of the cool things about Oasis strings is they are expensive, but you actually get two sets of strings in each roll. So when you open up your strings, what you do is you cut them in half and then you uh, save the other half for another ukulele. And these are for concerts. So I'm gonna hold up the package. It says enough for two sets. So uh, I buy the high G and the brights and we'll start that process. So I also have some tools here. I always talk about this. These are on my Amazon affiliates page. If you're ever interested in using that, that should be linked below. But I love the Music Nomad. I had the school buy me one of those. It has all the different tools that you need. I love a string winder with a string clipper. We're not gonna be able to use the string winder today because they are friction tuners. And then of course I have a sanding block, a sanding sponge, which is great when you have sharp fret ends. So those are just three tools that I generally have with me, but I'm gonna open this pack of strings. So uh, I was just about to say, the Uke Playlongs channel, which was my main channel, which used to be called the Ukulele Tenor channel, now has been around for four years with Playlongs. So I just celebrated four years of Playlongs with a version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And I also made a tutorial video for that here on this channel. And that song has been made into a play long a number of times. And you might say, Chris, why would you reinvent the wheel? And my answer to people is you are welcome to recreate any play long you want as long as you want to do it. 
So if you want to do your own version of whatever song, you can go ahead and do it. I, we don't own the copyright anyway. You know, the music publishers are allowing us to, or the music copyright holders are allowing us to create the play-alongs with those songs. We don't own the rights, um, not even in like sort of an imaginary way. So go ahead. If you want to make a play-along of a song, you go and do that. I mean, that's your right. Please do. Now, Daniel on Circuits and Strings had one of his uh, travel ukuleles ripped through the top. So I've been using beads. These are a pack of beads that I just got from Walmart. And I'll probably just do white. I'd like to have clear, but I don't have clear beads right now. So I'm just going to use four white beads to tie on to on the top. So anyway, um, yeah, so even though there are a number of playlongs for Over the Rainbow, I wanted to do it for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's the fourth anniversary, and it's probably the best-known ukulele song out there that's pure ukulele. So that's important to have out there. But even more importantly, I wanted a version for baritone, and I wanted to address the strum that's used on the song because it is a unique strum to Is and what he does. So that's out now. It was released this last week, and as well as the, the tutorial and the different playlongs for both high G, low G, uh, baritone, and then just what I call the um, lyrics and chords version. I, I just call that the lyric version of, of the playlong. So the channel has been around for a while, but the playlongs have been around for four years. And that's really exciting. So just wanted to share that with you. Um, ad revenue. The Uke Stuff channel has been monetized since May of 2020. Um, how's it doing? Well, it was doing better. It was actually at one point making almost $60 a month. But since Christmas, um, revenue is way down. So since Christmas, revenue is down to about $30 a month. Now, it's a good thing that it's not my day job. And I look at the people out there on YouTube who do YouTube for a living. That's their that's their life. Um, I can't imagine doing that as, as a music educator. I mean, that's my main source of income is my, my teaching job. So thankfully, if, if revenue drops down to, you know, almost nothing, it's okay because I don't really ultimately do this to uh, survive. But just thought it'd be worth mentioning, in last year altogether, um, for the, the, the year of payment from Google was about $230 from May until December. So I recently bought some LCD shop lights uh, and then I bought some uh, microphone stands, and those are going to be the new backdrop lights that I use on my videos too. And also this year I bought a couple of backdrops. So I've uh, been putting some money into the channel this year, even though the channel itself isn't putting much money back into my pocket. But again, you don't do this, you don't do the reviews or anything uh, to make a living. You do it because you have a passion and you want to share. So that is kind of the news from that front. I thought you'd be interested. Uh, pretty soon, the Stuff channel will hit 3,000 subscribers, which is a nice mark. Um, I think I'm looking forward to like at the point where you have about 10,000 subscribers. And the Uke Playalongs channel, you'd think that there'd be a natural sort of like progression where that channel would drive subscribers to your other channel, especially considering that you have tutorials and things. It really hasn't done that. So the Uke Playalongs channel um, has, it's going to be hitting 75,000 subscribers probably within the next week of me making this video. So that's kind of a nice um, a nice highlight as well. So um, yeah, those are really the news about the channels. All right, I'm still working on the strings here. I've got the first two strings on and I'm working on 
the third. I also wanted to spend some time and talk a little bit about uh, some of the YouTube channels that I watch and that I would recommend to you. And uh, if you aren't subscribed to these channels, I would encourage you to do so. They're all making great content. Um, a couple of these people are professional YouTubers, others are not. So I thought I would just mention these to you. The first one, of course, I've already mentioned in this channel, but I, I feel like I want to always acknowledge him, is Daniel Hulbert at Circuits and Strings. Circuits and Strings. Um, Daniel has been making videos for a long time. He is a hobbyist luthier, and um, he does great work making creative projects. He'll also do reviews and other things. He will also cover knives and other things that he has interest in. So Daniel's channel is really good. Check out Circuits and Strings. I'll try to put links to all these below. The second one is another luthier, homemade luthier, by the name of Steve Girardi. Steve Girardi is down in Texas, and hopefully he's doing well. As I'm filming this, Texas is in that deep freeze. Uh, we just survived the deep freeze in Minnesota slash Wisconsin. I teach in Minnesota and live in Wisconsin, um, where I live. So we've just survived the deep freeze, but it's a totally different experience for us than it is for people that live in Texas. So anyway, Steve makes all kinds of different projects uh, between ukuleles to canjos to you name it, and um, does it from a really practical standpoint. Um, he even will do um, ukuleles made out of like a popsicle box. Turns out that Steve loves popsicles. So he's happy to try all sorts of things. And Steve also does ukulele reviews as well. So I always enjoy Steve's videos. Uh, related to that, again, dealing with projects is a website with a fellow named Daniel who makes a channel called Fun Ukulele Projects. He only has like 200 some subscribers right now. And he does giveaways at certain levels, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of gauging his interest. Really fascinating, um, really fascinating channel focused on um, how to like repair ukuleles or do modifications to ukuleles or ukuleles that he's been asked to repair for an ukulele store uh, in the, I think the LA area, the U-Space store he's closely connected to. So uh, check out Fun Ukulele Projects. That's another good one. Going over to England, if you don't know about it, there is a rather famous ukulele store called the Southern Ukulele Store. There's also a couple other channels I can talk about, but I can leave those for a future video. Uh, the Southern Ukulele Store is um, hosted by Alex Beds, and he reviews ukuleles and strings. Did a great summary of strings the other day. Um, highly recommended, and he started a side channel to discuss uh, issues above and beyond what he covers on the Southern Ukulele Store page. So you can check out the Southern Ukulele Store, and you can also check out Strings with Alex. Those two channels, they're very closely related, um, but one is Alex's own channel, and one is the Southern Ukulele Store's channel. Uh, highly, highly recommended. Now, as it comes to ukulele reviews, as you know, I love to do reviews, but the um, really the verified authority on reviews is Barry Maz as Got a Ukulele page. So if you are not subscribed to Got an Ukulele, Got a Ukulele is, you know, so much larger than my own efforts, and that's fine. I mean, it's not a competition, but... Um, if you aren't subscribed to Barry's page and you don't watch his reviews, you should sign up to do that because they're great. His work is fantastic and he's got a, a record of uh, being doing this for over 10 years, which is amazing. And it does take a lot of commitment and energy to consistently create content and push it out for people. And he is an independent reviewer uh, like I consider myself, although I associate with flight um, as well at this point. 
but in a different way. I'm not a paid sponsor. I'm just a, a part-time employee. So um, I'm not totally independent, I guess, but really, truly, I, I am when it comes to the reviews. And Flight has been nothing but encouraging about that. But nonetheless, if you want to check it out, you can check out Barry's site at Got uh, Ukulele. Got an Ukulele. Um, some more channels. Jody at Girl Meets Uke does a bunch of stuff. And in fact, I've found Daniel's fun ukulele projects by watching Jody's videos because Daniel sent her an ukulele to uh, not just use, but uh, sent her one as a gift, which turned out to be quite wonderful. It was a Vorzen, and I just recently reviewed that Vorzen product on my channel. Incidentally, the Corala version was reviewed by Gata Ukulele many years ago, 2013. So um, anyway, uh, definitely check out Girl Meets Uke. She does reviews, she does covers, she does chats about ukuleles and other things. She's uh, been very involved and in participating in ukulele festivals, especially like Ukulele World Congress, things like that. Another sort of ukulele just hobbyist that's doing a channel is now as a music educator as well is Lisa. The, her channel is Ukulele Fool. Check out Ukulele Fool and her videos. And one of my favorite channels that I watch every day is Rich Davis. So you might want to check out Rich Davis's channel. Um, not a ukulele teacher by any means, but just a hobbyist who does a ton of videos and his real love is for inexpensive ukuleles that don't break the bank that um, are fun to play and rich really loves aklat and kamis although um, he'll play anything that's sent to him i found my love of irc pineapples thanks to rich also recently found another ukulele to review when rich posted about it being on sale so uh, definitely check out Rich Davis's website. Uh, three more for you. I'm just going through the list of channels that I think you should check out. Um, One Music School, Katie Denure, does reviews, does tutorials, great spirit, fostering a community. Bernadette teaches music. I think everybody knows Bernadette at this point. Uh, Bernadette actually left teaching to do um, YouTube full time and social media full time with ukulele. And Bernadette just recently had a daughter. So uh, check out Bernadette Teaches Music. And the last one I want to mention is someone that I still can't believe doesn't have a larger following, which is Pismo Ukulele. Uh, it's really hard to describe Pismo Ukulele other than he's not making fun of ukulele people. But what he's doing is he is doing performance art. He's acting in the role of Pismo, teaching people about beginner or pre-beginner, he calls it, content. And it is so hilariously funny. And the creator, just so you guys know, um, was, was a writer and I think even a director for Curb Your Enthusiasm and a bunch of other projects. I mean, he's connected, he knows people. Um, it's low budget but hilariously funny and hits often too close to the mark of what really is. And some people I think take it as him being making fun of ukulele players and owners, but in reality, what he, it's commentary. It's commentary on what we're doing. So to have somebody that is committed to doing performance art for the ukulele community, that's really pretty amazing. So where am I at? Um, I have put on the strings on this as I've just chatting uh, while I'm doing it, um, holding it up. I need to adjust the action a little bit to bring the action down just a little bit. So I'm going to do that first, and then I'm going to tune it up. And it's not going to stay in tune very long, that's for sure. Okay, action is really low. Too low, in fact. So I'll bring it back a little bit. Uh, oh, i got to make sure that I'm in the grooves. It's hard to see the grooves in this one because it's all clear. There we go. Now I just have to bring it to pitch. So these are hard. I'm holding it up again for those of you that are listening to this podcast. 
really the hardest part about this instrument is where to clip a clip-on tuner. Okay, that's almost a G. That's almost a C. Got to move this over. Now, these treble ukuleles are not very loud. And they're not supposed to be. Now, it's going to go out of tune right away, but here it is. First playing of this instrument. A little bit of Mozart. Now, what I love about it, I'm gonna hold this up to the camera, is that you can't even see the string. So I'm gonna call this one the ghost ukulele, and it looks like I can even adjust the attention again now a little more. And we'll see if I can get that down to good action level. It's just adjusting as it starts off. So thank you for joining me on this podcast. I hope, again, it wasn't too boring hearing me work on this instrument while I was talking through uh, sort of the issues of what's going on. But as always, thank you for your support. Definitely, if you haven't, love it if you'd subscribe to the Uke Stuff channel. Love it if you'd subscribe to the Uke Playlongs channel. If you ever want to make a donation, you can do so at Buy Me a Coffee slash Uke Stuff. That will get to me, and it's great. I think it's like, um, I was looking at the numbers, I think it's like 90 cents of every dollar comes back to the creator. So thank you for donations there. My online ukulele method for teachers that's the video ukulele method is available there as well and really there's not much else to say for right now so be watching the channel for more future content all right thank you so much for joining me on this podcast i hope you're having a great day and i'll be back soon with some more uke stuff for you